What if I told you the best zoom lens for the Sony FX30 are not Sony lenses? Let's talk about the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and the 50 to 100 millimeter f1.8. I love the Sony system and the amount of value that they give you for their price, especially the Sony FX30. But of all the downsides of a camera, a small sensor is something you can't ignore when it comes to low light. Fortunately, there are two solutions for this. One being faster lenses that can open up their apertures to something like f1.4 or even f1.8. And then there's just a brighter lighting beyond your typical practical lights that you can find at home or in event halls. But if you're running and gunning and can't control the light, you're pretty much left with control over faster lenses. I initially saw these lenses used by Joel Gabrielson on his Sony FS5s for his video work. And I decided, why not give it a try on my beloved Sony FX30? Prior to these lenses, I was shooting on the Sony 16 to 55 millimeter F2.8, which was great. But for the APS-C system or Super 35 for you video shooters, you're not gonna find any zoom lenses that are faster than F2.8 native to Sony. But with these Sigma lenses, you'll be able to shoot with an aperture of f1.8, getting an extra stop of light. As someone who records video for his church, I could always use faster lenses. But even with that extra light, how do these pair of lenses actually perform with autofocus? Well, surprisingly, they're great. I usually have reservations when using adapters between two different systems. In this case, it's Canon to Sony. But after using them for a while, I'm confident about these lenses on my Sony bodies. Despite these Sigma lenses having a Canon EF mount, when used with the Sigma MC11 adapter, these lenses almost work like native ones. I have two of these adapters as well, so at least I could actually experience a level of consistency between different adapters. But even if you don't use autofocus or prefer autofocus, one of the perks of using these is the manual focus. Compared to the mirrorless lenses that have fly-by wire mechanisms, these DSLR lenses will give you a more consistent and accurate focus pull. I may not be doing quick back and forth focus pulls, but at least I know that my focus is consistent no matter how slow or far I pull. So it works. How's the images coming out of both of these lenses? Well, I tell you, I thought I was shopping for knives in the kitchen section of eBay because these things, they're sharp. Take a look. Here's a comparison between the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter f1.8 and the Sony 18 to 105 f4, an old favorite lens of mine. I enjoy using the 18 to 105 for versatility, but when you put it side by side with this Sigma, I have a hard time not choosing the Sigma. It's just so clear, so sharp, and so clean. Wide open at f1.8, this lens is sharp in the center and on the edges. In regards to the bokeh balls, we got them round at the center and also towards the edges. We got nine aperture blades on here and they look pretty good. When it comes to chromatic aberration, don't really find much at those lower f-stops. When it comes to distortions, you're really not going to be concerned with that with the 50 to 100 millimeter, but more so on the 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 on those wider ends like 18 or even 24 millimeter. But of course, you can adjust in post should you like. In regards to focus breathing, that's not really something that I look at, but it seems pretty minimal and it hasn't been a problem for me, if that's something that you're curious about. If you're someone who's looking for a pair of lenses that can pretty much do it all and do it for a long time, well, these lenses are about the best of what you'll find. With how these function and the kind of looks that you get out of these lenses, it's hard not to choose these lenses for your next shoot. It's no wonder that people who used to shoot Canon still keep these lenses and adapt them to whatever camera systems that they're using, even on cameras like RED. Despite the downsides to these lenses, which we'll talk about in a minute, these are still my favorite to use. I pretty much use it for everything from sports to church to these YouTube videos and once in a while vlogs. So pretty much it's tennis videos and talking head videos. When I'm in church, I'll keep the 50 to 100 millimeter for telephoto in the back on a tripod and then I'll grab the 18 to 35 millimeter which is on the Sony FX30 and I'll go around handheld or on a monopod. But when shooting sports, it's a little trickier. I've had pretty decent results tracking tennis players move laterally, but if you're going to chase them down from the baseline to the net, the autofocus may be questionable. This is even challenging if you got objects in your frame while 
tracking your subject. It just might catch, focus on something else while your subject is continuing to move across your frame. If you haven't shot much with telephoto zooms, keep in mind that it's best to keep your distance as you're able to avoid the minimum focus distance and risk getting your subject out of focus. The minimum focus distance of the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter is 95 centimeters or 37.4 inches, which is a little more than three feet. And it'll be easier to get your shot if you push some allowance between you and your subject who may be running back and forth. And because no lens is perfect, let's address the elephants in the room. First one is bulkiness. In order to use this lens, you've got to use an adapter, which again, will add a little bit more weight and length to your setup, if you want to squeeze this thing into a more compact bag anyway. So just anticipate a bulky setup. But even without this bulk, this lens is still heavy. The Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter with the adapter weighs about 935 grams. And this one, 50 to 100 millimeter with the adapter weighs about 1620 grams. Although I prefer the image quality of both of these lenses, I much prefer the weight of something like the Sony 18 to 105 millimeter F4 at 427 grams. One of the reasons why I went mirrorless is for a lighter camera setup. But with these lenses, it brings all that weight and bulk back to our setups and back in our bags. However, at this point, after using this pair of lenses for a couple months, I've become so used to it, especially when I just set these things up and leave it on a tripod. If I really wanted a compact setup, I would probably stick to something like the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter and the Tamron 70 to 180 millimeter both at f2.8. If you're used to full frame setups in your backpack or even rolling case, then it's no biggie to carry something like these Sigma pair of lenses. But something more important than the weight of your lenses is the waiting time you'll have to endure when these lenses are hunting for focus. Now most of the time, these lenses will focus well. When it comes to the 18 to 35 millimeter, maybe one out of 10 times it'll be hunting for focus. However, when it comes to the 50 to 100 millimeter, it seemed like those odds are a little more. I actually feel like I'm missing a focus maybe three to four times out of 10 when I'm focusing on a subject. Yet my odds are still positive. The 50 to 100 millimeter will seem worse if you're trying to catch fast subjects, whether it's people or animals. But if you're shooting a talking head where the speaker walks from side to side, then this will easily keep up. I increase my chances of nailing my focus when again, I keep my distance much farther than the minimum focus distance. Another reason to keep your distance is not just for focus, but also for noise made from the focus racking of your lenses. One of the things that I point out in my 18 to 35 millimeter review is that this lens is noisy when it comes to autofocus. You move a couple centimeters back and forth, left to right, and this thing will be audibly racking focus back and forth. And if you mount your microphone directly on your camera, you will hear it. And of course, this only gets worse when there's focus hunting on top of it. So you get more frequent noise. This is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F1.8. And on the camera right now is the Deity D4 Duo. Moving back and forth. I can kind of hear it from behind the camera, but it's really not that audible. You really have to be close to the camera to really hear it. What do the best lenses for the Sony FX30 cost? For the 18 to 35 millimeter, you'll be spending around $600 American. For the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter, it's closer to $1,000 American. Plus you at least need one MC11 adapter from Sigma for $250 new. For the complete cost of this set, we're already looking at the price range of something like a Sony G Master zoom lens. I bought both of these lenses with the adapters for about $1,700 though. If you're not convinced about getting lenses like this and you're looking to stay more native in the E-mount system and lessen your bulk and overall expenses, you could look into getting these other two lenses. First being the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter f2.8 for about $700. And the second being the Tamron 70 to 180 millimeter for about $1,200 US. Both got excellent image quality, range, and of course, is still good at low light with that aperture at f2.8. If you plan on upgrading to full frame in the future, the Tamron 70 to 180 may be a more reasonable lens purchase than the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter f1.8. 
But if you're not looking to invest in full frame lenses, then you'll be happy with these Sigma lenses, as they're plenty enough for what most of us need. But please, Sigma, make these for Sony E-mount. If you're contemplating on only picking up one of these lenses, I would refer you to the 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8, which I talk more about over here.